Hey guys, Rob here. Welcome back to Glidal Tech. Today I'm doing another video, not cosplay related, but instead a DIY video concerning the PlayStation 2. Now, you may be asking yourself, Rob, why the heck are you doing a PlayStation 2 video in 2021? Isn't the most relevant console these days the PlayStation 5? And to that, I say, yes, I know it is, but I'm really excited, really pumped up by this video I saw on YouTube of a guy talking about his modded PlayStation 2. Essentially, what this mod allowed him to do, he had software installed in the PlayStation 2 and a hard drive put inside the entire thing, allowing him to boot digital versions of PlayStation 2 games, run them on the console without ever needing a physical disc. And to that, I was really excited. I thought that was an amazing idea. Before I saw that video, I didn't even think that was possible. I love the PlayStation 2. I grew up with the thing, and I remember playing Lego games, um, Narnia games, Lord of the Rings games, Spider-Man 3. I remember all these sorts of games. It was amazing. And these days, I thought the only problem with the PlayStation 2 is the fact that there weren't digital a way to get digital versions of games. This method allows you to have that. and. I thought that was amazing because I could play all these games again, have it on a much more portable version of the console, and oh, I, I was doing this. I totally had to do this. So I went around town and for about the next week, week and a half, trying to find a used PlayStation 2, and I did manage to find one. It had to be the fat model. I found a couple slim models, um, but those, first off, weren't the model I needed, and two, they were also you know a bit beaten up, and I wasn't quite sure if they would work. This thing looked like it was in good working condition, except for a few cosmetic errors. Um, it looked fine. Took it home, booted it up, and it worked just great. The only slight issue I had was the disc tray. When you ejected it, it made a little bit of a grinding noise, but I could overlook that. Then I went to Amazon and I purchased all the materials I need for the mod. I got a 500 gigabyte hard drive. I got a network adapter. I got a memory card and I got a flash drive. All of this would be necessary for the mod and I will link in the description um, both where I got these materials from and the video tutorial I followed to uh, install the mod software on all of this. But what you guys will be seeing today is my work on the PlayStation 2 console itself. Like I said, there were some cosmetic errors, scratches, a bunch of dirt all over the thing, basically just wear and tear, and there was obviously dust on the inside all over the circuitry and all that. So what I did is I went to eBay and I purchased a replacement PS2 shell for the same model I had. What you guys are going to be seeing now is me essentially taking apart the PlayStation 2 cleaning out the internals, getting rid of all that dust, all that grime on the inside, and then moving all the internal stuff into the new shell and putting it all back together. Then I'll put all these modded pieces into it and show you what it can do, the games I have on there, the software I have. It's going to be really cool. I will show you guys all that after I do that little uh, modification there. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing today. I'm really excited for it, um, and I hope you guys enjoy that little bit of the video. Now, before I get into that time lapse, I am going to say, like I have been doing, if you go to the time code here, that is skipping over the entire time lapse of this, um, me cleaning this out, putting in a new shell and everything, skips right to me showing you what the mod can do, what games I have on there, all that sort of thing. But if you want to watch the time lapse, see me putting all this together, you can start watching that right now.
Hey guys, so I'm editing the footage for the video and for whatever reason I realized that I don't have the footage anymore of me cleaning off the circuit board, you know, the disc tray, the fan, all that stuff. I don't have that. I don't know what happened to it, but it's gone. So I'm going to basically explain what I did so that way if you are doing it yourself, you know what to do. Um, essentially, I took a mini compressor with a basic air nozzle on the end of it and used that to spray out all the big clumps of dust. A can of compressed air works just as well. I just didn't have that on hand. But if you're going to use a compressor, make sure it's on a low setting so that way you're not, you know, damaging the board or anything. Then after all that was done, whatever dust was remaining, I used a so small soft brush like this and a microfiber cloth to clean all of that off. Um, that's essentially what I did. I didn't go in depth cleaning anything. There weren't any big dirty spots. It was mostly just a lot of dust. So that's how I cleaned all that off and then I started reassembling it, which you're going to see in just a moment. Um, once again, sorry I don't have the actual footage of me cleaning it. Um, I wish I did, but for whatever reason, it's gone. So. Uh, that's what I got, sorry about that. All right, and here we are after all of that. Here we have the PlayStation 2 with its replaced shell, and it's not showing up very well on screen, but it definitely looks a lot better. There still are a few um, blemishes and scratches on there, but that is kind of unavoidable at this point, but it is a lot better than this one that it came with, um, which I don't know how well you saw it in the time lapse there, but if you open it up, you can just see the amount of dust and grime that is inside this thing, which honestly, yes, I could have just opened it up and cleaned all that out and it would have been exactly the same internally, but like I said, the main reason for getting a replacement shell was to get a better looking exterior. So we have that there, but after all that, here's all the pieces that you need after PlayStation's all good to go to mod it. If you follow the tutorial that I linked in the description, you'll have your hard drive set up as well as a flash drive and a memory card with free McBoot installed. Now, I do have an additional memory card, and that's because I wanted a memory card that all my um, game saves can go on to, and the other memory card only holds free McBoot to make it a lot easier for me. Now, that being said, it's very simple to install all of this onto your PlayStation 2. You turn around and you have this expansion bay here. Um, you remove this little 
cover and you've got the hole where the hard drive is going to go. You can set this aside because you won't be needing it. You take your hard drive and the uh, network adapter piece here and you plug it in. It's very simple to do. It should just line up and snap in there. And then this very simply just slides in and push fits onto there. And there you go. That's the back end of the PlayStation with the hard drive installed. Next, you can take your flash drive, which I have a lower profile flash drive coming in the mail that I will be using in the future. But this, you can just plug in to any one of the two PlayStation um, USB slots there. Now, all that's left is the memory cards, and I'm going to take my first memory card and put it in the slot one, and that's where all my games will be saved to, and then the free McBoot card, I can plug it in to slot two. That being said, that is the assembly process for all the pieces after you have installed the mod and you're ready to go with the PS2. So, now I'm gonna take this, hook it up to the TV, and show you basically what mods are installed, what games I have, and everything that I can really do. And here we go, this is the um, free McBoot loading screen. You can see it looks different than the normal PS2 stuff. You got a bunch of stuff, browser, system configuration, launch elf, um, launch disk, OPL1, GSM, free boot configurator, restart system, shutdown system, and then it repeats. Um, so if you go to the browser, you can see this is where you can look into your memory cards and see what's installed on there. Uh, this is the one where I've got my saved files, nothing much at the moment. And then over here, this next one is where I've got my free McBoot stuff installed. Um, this memory card is required to have the free McBoot stuff on your console. Um, yeah, so then you go back to the home screen there, and there's a bunch of different options we can go through, but we're not going to go through all of that. Instead, we're going to focus on OPL 1.0 and GSM. You open up GSM here, and then you can see this is where you can select the different types of graphics and the different resolutions that is outputted by the PS2 onto your um, monitor, TV screen, or whatever. There's a lot of different ones you can mess with. Um, if you do HD TV selections, you can see all the selections there. 480, 576, 720, 1080i, 1080i again, 1080p, and so forth. I'm going to leave it at where it is right now because I have no reason to mess with it because it looks fine on my TV screen as it is. Yeah, exit out to the browser, and then we're going to go check out the... Um, open loader 1.0 software which allows me to boot ISOs game ISOs digital versions of games from the hard drive um, you can see here this is the list of games that I have on the hard drive currently it's just a bunch of games that I thought would be cool to install on there and obviously this list will grow as I think of more games run across some more games I'd like on there and whatnot um, yeah, you can see it repeats and all there. I'm going to scroll up here to um, one of the Lego games. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Lego Indiana Jones, The Original Adventures. Um, this is, was a good classic game that I played when I was younger, and I really like it, so I decided to boot it up to show you guys how this would work. Just to let you know, I do not have the disc currently in the PlayStation. This is entirely booting off of the hard drive. As you can see, it's booting up just like normal. No delay, no nothing. It seems to be working just fine. And there it is. There's a little loading plane that you can see on there. And then here we are. This is the home screen, Lego Indiana Jones. I can press the start button and then I can load one of my um, save games. And then and this will boot me up into the game and allow me to play Lego Indiana Jones, like I said, without the need for the physical disc. This is really cool, and I've already played this a few times on there. That's what little save data you saw on there, and a little bit of progress I have on here is from playing this completely on or off of this hard drive. As you can see, I can move around. Everything seemed to work just fine. Switching between characters, walking around. I can select the different levels on here for Raiders of the Lost Ark, you know, Lost Temple, Into the Mountains, City of Danger, all of that. And then I can move over to, you know, the Temple of Doom, and then the Last Crusade, finally. Everything's really cool, and I'm really excited to be messing around with this. There's a lot more games that I have on here, and I cannot wait to mess with them all. There you go, that is what I have with the PS2, the whole modded thing. I'm really excited for it, um, to be messing around with this thing again. Um, every time I think of a new game, I either go find it um, you know, digitally, or I go find a physical copy that I can rip uh, on my computer to put on there myself, which is another tutorial on how to do that, which I think that's actually included in the tutorial that I've linked in the description. Um, but 
that being said, there's a lot of fun you can have with this thing, and I'm really excited that it's all finished up, and I'm going to be able to do this and mess with it over the next couple weeks, months, and years, you know. But yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to check out some of my other stuff, you can check it out over here. Up top, you can see my DIY Luke Skywalker's lightsaber, and then down below, you can see my DIY fully metal lightsaber. I had a lot of fun building both those projects, and I can't wait to do more DIY lightsaber and DIY projects in the future. Um, yeah, as always, please subscribe, and I'll see y'all in the next one.